So thank you everyone that sent your questions for the weekly Q&A. Uh, I got so many questions to answer that I'm probably going to come back in a couple of days and do a part two of the weekly Q&A. So if you didn't get your question answered here, hold out hope. Maybe it'll get answered in a couple of days. All right. So anyways, stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, let's get through this one. Uh, Steve's Wrestling Ramble is going to start us off by asking, do you think it would have been best if Sasha Banks had retired? Seems kind of uh, odd, random question. Now, personally, I don't give much of a flying flip about Sasha Banks one way or another. Uh, so I wouldn't have cared if she didn't come came back. I wouldn't have cared if she didn't come back. I'd been fine with me. Um, but the company's invested a lot in her over the past few years, so you hate to see that type of investment just go completely kibbutzkies. So it's probably better, ultimately, uh, that she did came, come back, and especially because they needed some fresh blood for her uh, for Becky Lynch, I should say. So um, I don't think that she would have been better off retiring, Steve. That seems a bit extreme. Uh, Sue Pete, any thoughts on MLW's pay-per-view debut in November? And any thoughts on MLW in general? As I seem to think it would be a product, a brand you would enjoy. Uh, the reality is, is I'm not in a place in time where I'm seeking out a ton of professional wrestling to watch. I'm certainly going to give all elite wrestling a try come October. Um... You know, and then there's WWE, but seeking out all these other smaller companies, like it's good for them if they got a pay per view coming up in November. You know, some people I think seem to enjoy them. Maybe at some point I'll check them out, but I'm not dying to do so. And frankly, I look at it in a position I'm at, even as insignificant as I am on here on YouTube compared to some of these other YouTube wrestling channels. Um, you would think at some point in time some of these companies would reach out to people like me and be like, hey, you know, why don't you check us out? Why don't you talk about us? You know, but, of course, we're in wrestling and everybody's so fucking overly sensitive that if I came on and I bashed an MLW show, instead of looking at the fact that I'm still talking about an MLW show, and I'm not picking on them, I'm just saying this is across the board in general, um, instead of saying, hey, it might be a bad reaction, but he's still talking about it, still giving us free advertising, uh, they do nothing. So, they ask. Companies want people like me to watch more, just fans in general to watch more. They should do a better job of going out and getting us. A Vols fan, Hulk Hogan said on Austin's podcast, his idea for WrestleMania 6 was to turn heel on Warrior and call himself Hollywood Hulk Hogan. How well would this have worked in your opinion? Hulk Hogan is full of crap. Am I really expected to believe all of a sudden now after all these years that this was his big idea for WrestleMania 6? Bullshit. Why can't Hogan, among the other things you'd ask questions about him with, why does he feel the need to make this shit up? Like, you're the biggest star in the history of professional wrestling. You got enough other cool stories that you could go with here. Like, it goes beyond just working or even just going beyond and not being able to separate Terry Bollea from Hulk Hogan to he's just making stuff up as he goes because it sounds cool. It's, just, it's dumb. And I don't know how well it would have worked in 1990, and I, I'm not sure... Part of the trick of why Hogan turning heel and WCW worked so well was the fact that it was a different company and it didn't have all the years of WWF history behind it. You could do something different with Hogan in a different place, at a different venue, uh, in a different company. And you know the, the whole thing that points to this being crap is, now in 96, you heard about Hall and Nash talking about initially Hogan was hesitant to do it. And he didn't want to do it. And he, they thought maybe they were going to have to do Sting. Just saying. Uh, Platane Kenny, who do you hate most? Dolph Ziggler, Jeff Jarrett, or Cody Rhodes? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! But he's never done anything personally to me, so... Nah, in the grand scheme of hating, like true hating, doesn't even come close. Blith, blith, blith. Fuck Cody Rhodes! And while he is a liar, and he's full of shit, and people should know this by now, and that's what he is, the reality is, is... Even though out of the three guys on the list, he's the one thing that in theory has done stuff personally to me in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I can I can look past that and get by that. And it's all good. The Memphis meat card piece of crap though. The flounder! That's a whole different story. As much of a piece of crap as Cody Rhodes is, he can't even measure up to the fact that this dude started not one, but two wrestling brands primarily as a personal vanity project to stroke his fucking ego. Fuck Jeff Jarrett. That 
one kid eight seventy six. Can you predict who Roman's attacker was? Um, I'm assuming it's going to be a disappointment. Sounds like the crap they did with it on SmackDown last week was a big turd sandwich. Yeah, just drop the storyline at this point. One Alex Sutcliffe. Is the wild card rule a good or bad thing? Should WWE get rid of it? Have they even been using it at this point? Or have they just been having everybody randomly appear on both shows any damn ways? Either do a damn brand split and keep them entirely separate, or don't do a brand split and put everybody together. It's dumb. Ugh. It's like one of those things you feel like Vince literally got the idea. Nobody around him had the courage or conviction to be able to tell him how dumb this is. So he rolls with it like it is everything. And then, as Vince is prone to do in his advancing years, he gets bored with it and he gets done with it. And then he's going to pretend like it never happened. Georgian and Fulio, will you watch Bound for Glory 2019? No. Part of the purpose of watching a pay-per-view like that would be thinking about entertaining watching their weekly shows going forward. And I have no passion or desire to do that. Last time I gave this company another chance a couple of years ago, they screwed the pooch. It was terrible. And I'm not saying that the product in and of itself might not be better now, but again, it's just that company's burned me too much over the years. I have no interest in, at this time, giving them another chance. WNC Podcast. Thoughts on NWA doing tapings in Atlanta and Billy Corgan's current handling of the NWA. Can't really comment on Corgan's handling of the NWA because I don't know. I don't pay attention. And frankly, I do not care. As far as the other component thoughts on the NWA doing TV tapings in Atlanta, what is it, October, November? Who gives a crap? Okay, that's cool for them, I guess. Does it matter? I don't know. And again, I don't care. There's only so much bandwidth I have to pay attention to wrestling companies and wrestling shows, and I just don't see a need to be tuning into a brand, a product, a company, an organization that lived its best days three freaking decades ago and hangs on for whatever pathetic sliver that they have left. Chrysler San Martin, which is the miracle that actually opened your eyes to the divinity of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. You know, just being handed a world championship? Uh, marrying the boss's daughter? I mean, there are so many individual miracles that you can have over the years. It's hard to point to just one. But you know, it's one of those things that you can actually see it. You can feel it. And by God, you can believe it. Because it's real. Cyanide Raid. Would it have been cool for a Money in the Bank winner to cash in to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania? I believe several years back. I talked about this, especially when The Undertaker was still undefeated at WrestleMania, that the hell with going after a world title because those are won and lost at WrestleMania every damn year. If I want the Royal Rumble victory to mean something, I'm going after the one thing that's never happened. That's The Undertaker losing at WrestleMania. That's the far, 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 far bigger deal. So if you had done that with the Money in the Bank winner, I would have totally supported that. Because beating The Undertaker at WrestleMania was much bigger than winning a world championship. Alex, what's the main reason 2002 was a weird but awesome year for uh, WWE slash F? Well, you got the F out. You know, that's where Austin picked up his ball and went home. The Rock started to become a movie star and all this other stuff. But you also had this thing of the invasion angle crap was done and over with. Right afterwards, they bring in Flair. So he's there for 2002. You kind of start off with the reign of terror of God. Here comes Shawn Michaels back. You've got the fucking NWO. When you look at the overall talent of the roster, just the overall talent of the roster, you're involving Heyman and Bischoff. Da, da, da. Like, it had been really, really hard in 2002 to have a crappy year. Yeah, Hogan Rock, WrestleMania 18. SummerSlam was great that year. Survivor Series was great that year. Like, there's... You had so many big names and legit stars and superstars and some mega stars that you could throw out there all under your umbrella that even if you made a bunch of mistakes, you still could compensate for that because of just the sheer level of talent that you had. I think that's the biggest reason. Andrew Harrington, will WWE move Lesnar to SmackDown when they move to Fox in October? I would assume that would be a possibility. It could make some sense. Uh, the Den Syndrome. 
especially if they're going to present SmackDown as more of a sporty type of feeling product, then Lesnar being over there would make sense, even as a part-timer. The Den Sidron. Do you prefer 90s or 2000s HBK? I would probably say I prefer um, 97, 98 HBK over 2000s HBK. What the fuck is a Manix? What are the odds of a Drake Maverick, Renee Michelle consummation celebration in the ring on Raw? It'd be so fitting and appropriate if he finally got to that moment in the hand and he was going to consummate the marriage and then... Being the nerd, he couldn't rise to the occasion. That would be phenomenal. Be awesome. Never going to happen. MacDog714, I've heard you mention the possibility of redoing the Big Four pay-per-view review series. I've mentioned it. I've thought about it a little. I am not committing to that at any point in time here soon. Got a few months to decide on whether or not 2020 is really the right timing to do that. I would like to do it again at some point, yes, but I'm just making this clear. It has a lot of commitment because I would have to go back and rewatch every single Rumble. Not just going off of memory, but rewatch. Because every time you go back and watch these shows, you pick up different things. Every single WrestleMania, every single SummerSlam, every single Survivor Series. That is a lot of wrestling to go back and watch in the course of one year. Um, but you ask, will you bring back the Retro Pay-Per-View Review Series? Uh, probably. We may be one to two months away from that, maybe. Or maybe I'll save that for 2020. I don't know. Lex Express, your thoughts on MJF? I think he's overhyped by the AEW fanboys who only dig his gimmick because he rips off more successful heel gimmicks from the past, such as Jericho and such as The Miz. Well, even if you want to say that's true, that he has ripped off, borrowed from guys like Jericho and The Miz, um, sure. But that doesn't mean that you can't take what somebody else does, make it your own, and make it better. Like, I mean, you know, let's say, for example, Ric Flair literally stole the Nature Boy moniker from Buddy Rogers. I mean, that's a blatant ripoff right there. And a lot of things he did was a blatant ripoff. Jesse the Body Ventura was a superstar Billy Graham ripoff. In a lot of ways, Hulk Hogan ultimately was and became a superstar Billy Graham ripoff. But Hogan did things differently. He took some of what Superstar did, took it to a whole different level, put his own spin on it, and made it work. But, you know, that's the thing, is that happens. That happens. Like, is he a little overhyped? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm remiss to sit there and say anything bad about MJF or his character right now, because unlike most of these other indie flip fuck boys. He's actually trying to be a personality. He's actually trying to be a gimmick. He's actually trying to be a character. And that is something that we need in professional wrestling. We need that now as much as we ever, ever have. And the fact that he's actually trying to be that and he's actually living the gimmick, I applaud him for that. I salute him for that. And I most certainly don't want to sit here and run it down or say much bad about him at this point in time. But that is just me. Uh, thank you again to everyone who submitted your questions. Like I said, I'll um, answer some more of the questions, do a part two probably in the next couple of days. So keep your eyes open, keep peeled, and stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully I'll do a raw review this week too. All right, I'm out of here.